What do we know about combustion? Of course, one thing we know is that we can also call it burning, burning and combustion. Sometimes we uh, may make a very dangerous mistake and think we know more about it than what we really do. A good scientist always checks himself and knows that there is always something more that he might be able to learn and study about even the most common of things. And sometimes if we're not careful, some of these ideas, if we uh, do not study them close enough, might get us into trouble. Take the old fire triangle, the old triangle of combustion. What is it? Well, we know that we have to have three sides to have any burning in combustion. A combustible material, a source of oxygen, that is, if uh, oxygen is the material which we're using to support the combustion. And then, of course, the third and final thing is heat, temperature necessary to start this burning in combustion. We're quite familiar with uh, normal starting of burning. Take, for example, our friction match. The friction of rubbing one material on the other is sufficient to start the combustible materials with some sources uh, of oxygen there. And then once we have a source of heat, we know that this may be used to sort of produce a chain of combustion, a chain of ignition, actually, we should say, igniting one material with the other once we have this good source of heat. We know that the heat and the combustible material and the source of oxygen is necessary. We shut off the oxygen, we shut off the source of heat, and our burning ceases. But one of the first questions we might uh, ask about this combustion, is it always necessary that we do add an initial source of outside heat in order to get combustion started. In other words, for the ignition of our combustible materials. Well, we have several chemical materials here which might do a pretty good job of answering this question for us. Now, with goggles in place, because these are materials that you can never be too positively sure are going to behave just exactly the way you want them to, so we have some degree of uh, protection. Let's pour out some of this nice solid material, potassium permanganate. Now our crystals are just a little bit larger or more coarse than what we want, so we'll grind them up a little bit in our mortar here to get a degree of fineness which might save us a little bit of time in their uh, reacting perhaps the way we want them to. Now we're going to pour out some of our potassium permanganate into a little mountain-like. And then we'll uh, put a little dent in the top of this mountain. We'll make like a little crater lake here. And now to this, we're going to add some glycerin, potassium permanganate and glycerin. Potassium permanganate is a pretty good source of oxygen, and glycerin is a fairly combustible material. We added no heat whatsoever. And I think there is uh, very little doubt in anybody's mind about our final combustion. A good flame and all, but we added no heat to this 
burning and this combustion. In other words, this sort of ignited itself, a spontaneous type of ignition. Why? Why wasn't it necessary for us to add heat to this particular reaction? Well, I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to let that question up to you. Do we have any other sources of ignition and burning and combustion? Any other materials that will react pretty much in this same way? Well, maybe you can find out. Maybe we can find out ourselves.